So this morning, we stand here on behalf of leadership to bring us what we call the Vision 2028, which marks the beginning of phase two of the Possessing the Nations agenda. Phase one started in 2018 with the election of the chairman, Apostle Eric Nyameche, for a period of five years. And because of his re-election, he is continuing the agenda of possessing the nations. And this one is phase two. Hallelujah. Now, the phase two agenda has as its theme, the overarching theme, praise God, unleashing the whole church to transform their world with the values and principles of the kingdom of God. I will say it again, and if the media are in the position to put it on the screen for us. Unleashing the whole church to transform their world with the values and principles of the kingdom of God. Amen. I will repeat it again. And please, don't be fed up because you are going to hear it over and over again for the next five years. Amen. I'm talking about the overarching, what we are going to work under for the next five years, which is the umbrella theme for the Vision 2028 document. After we have exhausted that, we'll talk about our vision and our theme for 2024. But we need to come to grips with the overarching theme and then we come to the subtitle. So once again, the 2028 vision document has as its theme unleashing the whole church to transform their world with the values and principles of the kingdom of God. Amen. Do we have it now? Can I look behind to see if we have it? Anyway. But our main focus this morning is to bring to you the theme for 20. 24, which derives its source from the overarching theme of 2028 vision document. And for 2024, the vision and the theme under which we are going to work is a people of God Unleashed to transform their world. A people of God unleashed to transform their world. This is for 2024. That is going to be the theme that is going to run throughout the year. And different topics will be treated under this theme. Once again, the theme is a people of God unleashed to transform their world. May I kindly ask if we can, and I think we should, to say it, and then I'll give you the slogan that goes with it. It always comes with a slogan. Amen. 
But if you say the slogan without understanding the main theme, you'll be missing a very big chunk of it. So, the slogan for this year's theme, which I've said, is a people of God unleashed to transform their world is the same slogan, but the phase two has its slogan also. You remember that the 2023 had its slogan as transforming, possessing the nation. I am an agent of possessing the nations. That was for the 2023 vision. But for this one, the slogan is transforming my world. Amen. So if I say the theme, your response will be transforming my world. Possessing the nations. Can we bring some morale into it? Possessing the nations. One more time. Possessing the nations. I think leadership has set the tone by standing up. May we kindly stand up if we can. If we can. Yeah. You remember we have just come from the church as an army. As one of the, one of the themes. Amen. Possessing the nations. Possessing the nations. Amen. Good. You may take your seat. Now, for the theme 2024, the foundational scriptures are two. We want every member to have this written on the tablet of their heart. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 is our key text for 2024 with Acts chapter 1 verse 8. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 from the New International Version and then Acts chapter 1 verse 8. The first Peter 2 9 reads but you are a chosen people a royal priesthood a holy nation God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Hallelujah. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Then Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Amen. These are the two key scriptures. Now, this morning, my duty is to bring to the fore the rationale behind this vision. The rationale behind the possessing the agenda, possessing the nation's agenda, phase two. The rationale behind it is a continuation of the first phase 
which brought to the fore that the world is in darkness. And God has established the church as his redemptive entity through which he will save the world in terms of influencing the world with kingdom values and principles. In the phase two that we are looking at, the rationale is that the phase one equipped the church. It brought to fall who, what the church is, what kind of church can influence the world, what characteristics the church should demonstrate, and so on and so forth. In the phase two, it is assumed that over the past five years, a lot of equipping has been made. A lot of preparations have been made. And now it is time, with the size of our numbers, locked up in the four walls of the church, it is now that we create an atmosphere for the release of the, our teaming members for ministry outside the four walls of the church. Hallelujah. And so, the rationale for this thing, unleashing, and if I am to comment on the word unleashing, as it is used in our context, in this context, it is the release, a forceful release, of our members into the world to influence the world with the grace of God. Hallelujah. The members who have been equipped will go to their spheres of influence and exert the kingdom principles in that context. And so you will observe that we are not released to go and change the world. We cannot change the entire world. But we can change our world. Our sphere of influence. Hallelujah. Our sphere of influ influence. In other words, this, under this 2024 vision, all members will be required to be involved in ministry within and also without the church. When we say we are unleashing, it doesn't mean that we will all be going out. But majority of us who do not have ministry within the four walls will be encouraged to step out and look out for opportunities for ministry. And when we talk about members who are adequately equipped, I think that PIWC is by virtue of the caliber of people in this church and by virtue of the exposure that you have and, 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 and the influence that you have in, in corporate places, in, in big businesses, it is required that we will carry the graces of God into this, our world. And our world includes also wherever we find ourselves. And so this year, or coming year, 2024, every member will be required to find himself in some form of ministry, whether big or small, but you must be involved in ministry either within the walls of the church, but the emphasis this time is that we 
step out and go into our world and influence our world with the kingdom values and principles. Can I have an amen? amen. And so, we need to explain. And the purpose of this vision is that every member will therefore be encouraged to have a ministry out of the church, becoming channels through which God's grace will flow to the outside world. Amen. So you are going to be a channel of God's grace so that wherever you find yourself, you will become God's ambassador, God's representative in your sphere of influence. If it is in the marketplace, if it is in, in the home, if it is in the family, wherever you find yourself, you are expected to influence the kingdom and bring the kingdom of God to the place where you find yourself. Hallelujah. I want to read an excerpt of the rational document. The theme, 2024, a people of God unleashed to transform their world serves as the foundation for mobilizing and unleashing the whole church for the transformation of their world while we wait for the blessed hope the appearance of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. The theme is to call every member to see himself or herself as a channel through which God's grace will flow in blessing humanity. That the Christian is God's hope for the manifestation of his kingdom. Hallelujah. Now, under this topic, a lot of teachings will go on. And some will be about the, the characteristics of the church. The church as a people of God. A people of God living by the principles, values, and lifestyles of the kingdom of God. As part of the vision, raising Christ-like believers will also be spoken about because it came out clearly that it is only Christ-like believers who will have the capacity to transform their sphere of influence. And it is so critical. And that also, if we are going to be effective, then individually we should increase the quality of our spiritual devotions. The way we carry our devotions at home and in privacy will all cumulatively flow into the quality of life in the church. In other words, the home is where the real church begins. And if the home is healthy spiritually, then the church can also be healthy. Hallelujah. Now, when we talk about transforming our world, the context in which we are using transforming or transformation is twofold for us as a church. One, it is the conversion of souls to Christ. So when we talk about transforming the world, transforming our world, transforming whatever, we cannot downplay the evangelistic aspect of bringing people into faith in Christ because we believe that that is the beginning point. 
And so as we talk transforming our world, transforming our world, transforming our world, the key element in transforming our world is to ensure that people come face to face with the gospel of the Lord Jesus. That's our first modus operandi. Is that good English? Can I have an amen? So, then the second aspect, speaking in the context of which we are using transformation, is the conversion of the world through the values and principles of the kingdom of God. Conversion of society. It means that we are going to change the status quo in society and influence it with the values and principles of the kingdom. I pray that the Lord help us. Because out there, <laughs> the assignment is thick. To inf to, for you to be able to influence, your atmosphere demands empowerment. That is why our theme we can never go on without Acts 1-8. Acts 1-8 gives us the basis for which we can influence our world. And the power we are talking about here goes beyond speaking in tongues. It goes beyond personal edification. We are talking about power that will make you effective in a place where darkness prevails. In a place where darkness has usurped authority and has influence. But God is equipping us and God is going to empower us with the Holy Spirit so that wherever we go, whether it is darkness or corruption or decay or whatever it is, with the power of the Holy Ghost, with the power of the Holy Spirit, we'll be able to change it, sometimes gradually, and at times too dramatically. Can I have an amen? amen. May the Lord grant us that grace. Amen. Possessing the nations. I think I have not hammered it enough. But you know, I will leave it for the, the, the whole year. But I must, I must make sure that at least you got it before I leave here. Possessing the nations. May I kindly ask that we add some militancy in it. Would you please want to stand if you can? Possessing the nations. Possessing the nations. Hallelujah transforming my world. And if you are going to transform your world, praise the Lord, you will need empowerment. You will need empowerment. The world you are talking about is spoken of in Isaiah that the world is in darkness and gross darkness has overwhelmed the church, the, 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 the nations. But it says arise and let your light shine. Can I have an amen? amen? In the heads meeting, two scriptures were came to the fore. And one is in numbers. Allow me to look at my, my notes and see if I got it right. Numbers 22 4. Numbers 22 4. Can we have it? Read in unison. Can we do that, please? Let's go. <laughs> Hallelujah. When these other nations saw Israel coming in their right direction. Fear and terror came to them 
And they said, these people who are coming, they are like the ox. And they will lick all of us. And this year, and the coming year, as the church releases this, its demon numbers, all of us getting out in the power of the Holy Ghost, fear should fall wherever we, have, we appear. The people who have turned the world upside down has come here. There must be terror about the church. The, the world must now begin to respect the church. Hallelujah. The church must conjure and generate fear in the heart of the world of darkness. So that when we appear, they know that we will lick them like the ox licks the grass. Whatever is your situation, this morning the empowerment of God comes to you. And the fear of you and the fear of the church must fall on the world. You know that the recent incident, people were ready to lash at us. People were ready to lambast us. People were ready to say all kinds of things. But when God showed up, he shut their mouth. And this year, by the grace of God, oh, with the power of the Holy Ghost, the fear of us will fall on them. Then the other scripture is James chapter 3 verse 4. That as a wind, as a ship is driven by a fierce wind, so will this vision also be driven by a fierce wind. In other words, the vision, if you are to look at it critically, time did not allow me to share all that the church intends to do in the next five years. Massive adventures, massive projects, massive outreaches, a lot of nations to be conquered and taken for Christ. Hallelujah. And, and we cannot do that unless the power backing the church is, is so fierce that even though the vision looks very huge, in fact, some of the things that are in this vision can be very scary. But with the prayer of God's people and with the power of God like a fierce wind, as a fierce wind drives the ship, so will also the power of God drive this vision and make sure that it comes to pass. And so brothers and sisters, I'm here this morning to solicit for your prayer. That we will all pray, even now, that the Lord will send the wind of the Spirit to drive this vision to its ultimate realization. That will pray that nothing will derail and, and sway this ship. That nothing will limit its capacity. That the vision, as has been documented, shall be executed beyond what even we have said here. And that is what happened in 2023 vision. The things we set out to do, we were able to do and do it even beyond. And any time you are able to do something beyond your ability, you know automatically that that is God at work. May I please lift up, ask you to lift up your hands. And please, let's pray. And ask God that the church of Pentecost, which God has given a strategic place in this nation, that we have become the eye of the nations. Let's pray that we will not lose our place. Let's pray that we will not lose focus. Let's pray that what we want to do for the glory of God, all that we want to do, we want to do it for the glory of God. That Christ will be seen. That his kingdom will come. That all will know that God is still in the church. May I ask you please with a heart of passion, pray and ask God's spirit to back. Can we do it now? Let's do it now. Let's do it now.
I don't hear you, please. I want to hear your cry. that the members in their teaming numbers will find a place of ministry and each one of us will maximize the use of their giftings, the, the, the use of their talents, the use of their resources. Now we will find expression in you, but Whatever was stand in the way of this vision, may the power of the Holy Ghost ran over it. May the power of God back this vision and cause it to come to pass. In the level I want you to pray for yourself. The vision depends on all of us contributing our quota. And I've said that this vision is an unleashing of members into the world. What are you going into the world with? I pray as we pray, may you discover a place that you can be effective. May your giftings, may your resources, may your time, may your entire being back this vision. May you pledge to God and say, God, if this is what you want to do in my world, and if this is what you want to do with my life, I am yours. Use me as you want in my world, in my sphere of influence. Let me become your channel of grace. Let me become your hand. Let me become your eye. Let me become your feet. Let me become your heart. Lift up prayer for yourself. 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 I want to hear you. Avail yourself to God for his service. Lay your life down for him. Lord, use me and use all that is in me. All that is in me. I am yours. I am yours. Let my gifts be discovered. Let my gifts be unleashed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let me understand the vision. Lord, let me understand. Let me understand. Open my understanding. Open my understanding. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Oh 
Let me caution us that it's not enough to be saved. There are rewards waiting for us. That is why our theme is also tied to the second coming of Christ. That each one of us will do his best or her best until Christ comes. To us, Christ will come whilst he has not yet come. Yesterday, I heard at the funeral of Mrs. Victoria Pencil that whenever she had devotion with his children, he pointed out to them that Jesus will come, but she also pointed out Jesus is not in a hurry. So what you should do, do before the time. Yes, you remember. And so on Pentecost. So if there is something you must do, do it before that time. If you look at our numbers, the numbers that the Church of Pentecost commands, if every member is to throw his weight, there is nothing we cannot do. Kabosa. There is nothing that can stop us. But our challenge is that we have the silent majority. We want to pray. Lord, use me. I wish somebody would give me a song about that. Lord, use me, Lord, as a vessel. Use me, Lord, as a vessel. Let's join him in singing. Oh, Supply Man, the world. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask Pastor and not to pray that the wells will open in us. Giftings will come. People will find their place in the body of Christ. 
People who discover who they are in God. People who see God use them beyond their own expectation or their own anticipation. And as pastor prays, giftings also will fall. In the name of Jesus, may all giftings be activated as he prays. Lift up your hand in reception. equipped us in the past years you have strengthened us you have grounded us in this years ahead you are unleashing us father it is now time that after you're grounding us as your children and after we have grown in you, our fruits will serve purpose in the open places, in our various spheres, in the societies, in our world, beginning from our homes. Oh, gracious Lord, we pray this morning that you cause our fruits, Father, to be essential and beneficial to our spheres. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. we pray under the unction here, O oh Lord, that there will be a release of your spirit, a release of spiritual giftings in the name of Jesus Christ. O oh, gracious Lord, on the winds of prayer this morning, we call out to the heavens that let the Holy Spirit burst out every gift that is in us and cause it, O oh Lord, to be effective. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh gracious Lord, what is it that can stand the way of your people? Is it fear? We pray this morning that the acts of the apostles will be seen in our lives and demonstrated in our lives. Oh Lord, we, we want to even in this prayer, we testify to what you have already done. That before the birthing of this new vision, you demonstrated the unity in your church that we came together and prayed. And there was a release. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. In unity, we know that if we stand, O oh Lord, Father, you will grant us every resource that we need. You will grant us every grace that we will need. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, let the gifts of the Holy Spirit, Father, be demonstrated in our lives as we possess our wealth and as we transform our world. May the gifts of the Holy Spirit be seen in the name of Jesus and may it be backed, O oh Lord, with power, signs and wonders in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let your people begin to prophesy that which you are about doing. Let your people begin, O oh Lord, to cause the miraculous in the name of Jesus to bet out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, stir this vision with your spirit that is in us. As mighty and great as it may be, what we need is the stirring of the Holy Spirit in us. That we, O oh Lord, no matter how mighty it is, will be able to direct the course of this vision in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for resources every resource that we need by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, may we release it unto your church Amen. in this moment in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We will take nations. We will take societies. We will take our communities. And even the least of us will begin to experience your power and the move of your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we know that you are with us as a church. That which we need and even the things we haven't been able to ask because you're able to do exceedingly, greatly, even above the things we ask and the things we comprehend. The things of our thoughts. The very things we want to achieve in this vision. Father, may you grant it to us as a church. And by this prayer, the gifts of the Holy Spirit has been rekindled in us. 
by this prayer. The fire of the Lord has been rekindled in us. By this prayer, our light has come and we are rising to possess nations, to transform our world and every darkness will flee by the light of God that is in us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Can I have a big amen? Possessing the nation. Possessing the nation. Can I ask that we all stand as I now make the declaration? And now, in the name that is above every name, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I declare and launch the Vision 2028 document in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I also declare to this audience the theme for 2024 with its slogan. The theme for 2024 is a people of God unleashed to transform their world. And the slogan is one more time, the slogan is, 